So Kevin, you you found when I played those when I played those doubles on the rebound, you found them you found them kind of stiff. Well, okay. Uh, how would we test them? Well, let, let's let's. If you can play them really fast, you should be able to play them really slow, right? So let's let's go to stick control. Let's see what it's looking like. I kind of wanted to take you in a bit of a different direction, but that's okay. Well, we, could just, we could take up what you had assigned me first. All right. So go ahead and put on the metronome, put it on it, put on it 72. Start with double, huh? Go ahead and play, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just checking my uh, symmetry in the uh, Never quite get it right. It's an optical illusion. So it was <clears throat> it's to me. Uh, okay, so exercise number three. Check that out. See if you can do it. Come on, but you got to play in time. Seventy-two. Richard Martinez thing where you just let it come to come to rest on the surface. Okay, keep your metronome going. Try it again. Okay. See, see what's that? This is interesting, right? Because you came in playing really fast and really low like this, uh, crunched in, and there you you can get it out that way. And then when it comes to just playing nice, comfortable rebounds at 72 to a half note, you know, it becomes, you're right down in that place, real close to the surface when you're playing real fast like you were, right? And it's fast, it was cool. But now I ask, now I ask you for, so I want to see that you're really turning your wrists. Right, and you for a minute maybe you had it, and then I said let's let it rebound, and then from there it just got slower, lower, and lower and lower, and so you're back in. I'm gonna, I wanna go. Well, where's just a nice big? How are you gonna play crescendo strokes? It has to come up and up and up and up and up, right? So it's not just having one thing. See, that's what so many guys do. They Figure out ways to get certain things out. If I'm going to play real fast, simple time, I got this that I can do. If I'm going to play a roll, I can do it this way, but it's only going to be down here. 
And they have a way maybe to get out of paradiddle that's fast, right? They have all these things that they, but they, there is no overarching, there is no overview, right? So that there is continuity to the technique. So that's what I'm trying to give you. So if you can do one thing, you should be able to do the other, right? <laughs> the whole, we have to be, be able to play the full spectrum of dynamics and there are certain ranges of speed and so on, right? And there's this way that we play with regards to this technique using certain motions, seven basic strokes, right? So I just wanted to hear, you were, go ahead, you can put the metric, I, I, I'll just, where, where were we here? You see I'm getting a nice, bouncy, big wrist turn. Well, why is that hard to know? See, I, see what I think you're doing is you're going like this. Da da, da da, da da. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. We could we could do a side profile, but I'm pretty sure. Ah, uh, uh, see, that's why it always turns into this. And then so if you're going open and pull, or open and who knows, the hand kind of just feels like maybe if, it, if you throw it open, you know, you throw your hand open, and you, I feel it in all my fingers, right? And then. So if you want to go, you have to pull for every one of them. I guess, right? And there is a way to, 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 to play with fingers. Okay, but we're not doing that. What we're trying to, what I'm trying to, to get out of you is something that is different. I'm trying to get you to see, it's a three finger grip. I don't even need these back fingers. Look, look, look. I'm not doing anything. I'm just holding it like this. That's why the, this grip is so important. Didn't some students have the grip on a t-shirt or something? It kind of was a thing, the grip, right? And and so this is really important. Memorize this. See, this is what you don't have. It's just this. Go ahead and take your fourth and fifth off. Just musician laid it. Okay, why is the baby finger? Ow, that hurts. Go ahead and push your baby finger out as far as you can. Create a peace sign with your fourth and fifth. Come on, a peace sign. More, pull your fourth off. It'll hurt. Doesn't that hurt? It actually strained. It feels real strained in here. Okay. What we want, and, and my, my middle finger, it is slightly angled. Yours seems to be slid down the stick so it really angled down your middle finger where my fi i'm trying to get something that is akin to something going straight across it's not quite huh, see so just note you're now you're looking at your fourth and fifth now i'm talking about something else and you're looking at your fourth and fifth i know i know there see it already looks better flat of your thumb remember the idea of you're applying a certain amount of pressure for a comfortable constant not a death grip. It's not so that the stick will just fall down. It's holding it. Right? And then the middle finger is touching the stick and I can feel it on my palm right now. If, if, even though maybe if we were playing and there was torque, maybe you wouldn't. But right now I'm just showing you my elbow on my pad. It just looks like this. Yeah, you, yeah, you got the idea. See, it's, it's, it's like that. Fourth and fifth can just relax and come in a little bit, but not for me right now, they're they're not even really on the stick, right? They're, so I'm I'm trying to I'm just trying to trying to let I'm trying to get two notes, and 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 I'm not make a big deal out of it. It's literally you're just saying you're, you're, so you've learned this wrist turn, right? We have this wrist turn. See, this is why that Richard Martinez thing about these different what is it the uh, what would it be called? Different heights of turn. Well, yeah, there was like the the Martinez radius of height of turn. Okay, we have this one, and then right, and then we have the next one where it falls in on the palm. And you have the one where you really start to feel the weight of the stick. And then, and I probably started too high. See, see, if you're not at the floor to begin with, it's like a sundial, you know. 
starts here and ends here or something like that. <laughs> OK, or like a compass. And, and so we have this level of turn. Then this radiation, then you can really feel the weight of the stick. Laying in the middle finger and the, really in that three finger grip. And then we come down and let's see, but then we have maybe this height of turn from here to here. So we're up here. And then we have the turn that happens from parallel. Okay, okay so we know all of those. See, now your grip looks pretty good, but it really is this narrow fulcrum that Murray Spivak described, right? Okay, so if we're here, we have the second radiation and the third iteration. <laughs> it's a grid of iterations. Okay, now we're here. And yeah, see, and what would it feel like if we just turned for one note? It's simple to just going to turn for one note, you see. Yeah. I just, and you just let it come to rest on the surface. Do it again. Do it again. See, so now you're not throwing your hand open like you were before. But just make sure that the fourth and fifth just pull them off for a minute, just for fun. I don't want to. They're not on the stick. OK, I, that's I wanted to make sure. See, that's, that's what I was noticing. If you weren't throwing your hand open. See, they're not, they don't have anything to do with it. They don't go like this. Remember your plus sign thing that you came in with? You came in with this grip that was, a, what was it? I don't even want you to do it. I, I guess it's, it's OK. We can't run from the past that will teach us. So this is some kind of plus sign grip, right? I think, was it the thumb that was real far forward? Yeah, the thumb was. Okay, and so it looks like a plus sign. <laughs> okay, but, and then who knows what else is going on with that grip. Now, that really kind of takes, as soon as I roll my thumb up and point my, it, the stick goes into the back of the hand. And so when you go to do your stuff, you're doing something like that. Thinking that that's really, it but see that doesn't translate into this so you don't that won't give you this and it's also crushing the stick so you don't get that nice you get you don't get different so so you're going to get a brighter more lively you're you're tuning up the instrument okay so now now we've got this three finger grip and we're just we're learning first of all what a wrist turn is with a three finger grip where the floor is, the floor is very important. We really want to feel that floor. Everything emanates from down here. Everything emanates from down here. Okay? So we feel the floor. Okay? Right? So we have that. Yeah, that's right. We have this, this, this uh, kind of, how would you call it? Uh, it, it, in terms of a, it's like a zero bias line, right? Like you can't have a graph of something, you know. You know, what are the sales of uh, hi hats here? At this company, and it goes like this, but this keeps moving, so we don't know, right? So we really do have this starting place. We call it the floor, okay, right? And and so we have the three finger grip. You know, we have these different heights and we, it has certain feelings, especially if we're not actually playing. Once you get things in motion, things will change a little bit. But this really gives you a very good, simple way of getting it. And, and then we just turn down and everything stops. And it's it's a three finger grip that can be that can be utilized as a narrow fulcrum. Go ahead and do it. You really feel the impact in these somewhere. In, that's the Carlos Vega thing. I feel the fulcrum is somewhere in between the three finger grip somewhere right in between could be but you're going to feel it up front not the back of your hand right and you're just going to lift it up it's not this it's not an uptight thing lift it up and let it come down see i lift it up and i let it come down there's a, there's a feeling of following the stick it's is it 
there's some maybe gravity involved. So the weight of your hand, the gravity on this planet, and then you're just going to let it. I can get two notes. Just let it. Just let it die. Yeah, so you don't have to open up your hand to do that. Do it again. You don't do anything. You just wait at the floor with a three finger grip. Now, all I want is the first two of those. There you go. Put the hands together and play this to 72. Number three. Using your height right away. <laughs> You're way down here. Yeah, I know. Why? Why is that hard for you to do? It, it, because, well, because you don't have a really good wrist turn yet. Right? It's a little new to you. Well, I've been, I've been practicing the different heights. I've been working on a lot, actually. Good. And so this let, lets you know just how much work it takes. Because even though you're practicing it, it's still not fully connected. And when you came in and played doubles, you weren't doing it. You were doing your your head was somewhere in your hand. Your head was in your hand because you were doing this with the whole hand. Something akin to maybe the plus sign grip. I don't know. It wasn't just turning your wrist and letting the thick rock over this narrow three finger grip fulcrum. You weren't thinking that way. So it's about the wrist turn, you see? It's about the wrist turn. Always comes back to the wrist turn floor and the grip. Maybe, maybe in that order, maybe not. Okay. All right. So let let's let's follow follow up on this. Okay, to give you more insight because sometimes one part of the technique, one of the basic strokes, will provide insight into another one, okay? So, you have stick control up. <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, so let's take a look at exercise number nine. Go ahead, go ahead and play that for me. Joe, don't make me pad for the audience. <laughs> what happened to the audience? So no, number nine. Okay, so three rights and a left. Joe, uh, give me, give me what would be a left profile. So I need you to turn towards your right. This way. Uh, it's kind of. Can you? You can't do it that way. Oh, it's kind of difficult. Well, there's room. There doesn't seem to be anything below or in the way of that tom that I can see in the shot. Can you just back up? No, I'd have to move. Like I'd have to move the bass drum. I, it's all right. Like I'm in, I'm in such a small room. How much room do you have on your right side? There's there's a bunch of drumsticks here that I have to move. It's it's a it's a mess. Like, okay. Well, in the future you need to have it set up so that you can turn. I mean, it, all you really need to do is watch. What? I wanted what you think. So, I wanted to see your left side, like the doctor that. It's what limb to remove wrong. You just need to do this. Look, you, you can't you can't just do this. Um, yeah, there you go. I could try. Yeah, just slightly. It's, it's just, it's you, that, that, that's all you need. There you go. And just your drums stool over that much in the other direction towards your drums. Oh, man, I, I wish I had more space to work with. 
There you go. Just a little more. You move your stool any. Yeah, there you Just a little more. It's kind of hard. There's a high hat right here. <laughs> okay. All right. So there you go. Let's see if that works. Mm. It's kind of hard. Kind of pisses me off, but this is all I can afford right now. Okay. I, I totally get it, man. I wish I had lots of money. Einstein, Einstein created the theory of relativity in a room 10 by 10. Okay, there you go. Is that better? Yep. Let me see that. Go ahead, play the same, same exercise. Might work. Just swivel a tiny bit more, just the tiniest bit more. Even if you just move your snare drum to, to the right a little bit more. Even move the pad on it over. There you go. Yeah, just right to the edge, right to the far edge, to the right side of the snare drum. There you go. There you go. Okay, so I want to see the inside of your hand. See, see what I'm going for here? Go for Can you see it? There you go. Play. I'm leaning this way, so that's going to help me see the to the right side here. Now, now put your uh, put your um, left hand on your calf while you do that. Your calf down here on your calf. Yeah, no, but with the stick, play with your stick on your calf. You see, and your arm is relaxed. See, that's what you don't want to feel. You can turn back again. It's fine. Really all you need is just, just that much of a, a side view provided me the insight I was looking for. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So let's see. see. That's not it. That's not this technique. That is kind of how you came in playing doubles. It's, it's like a push-pull thing. Well, not really. I wasn't, so, I don't know. I wasn't really doing this. I wasn't. They, they, that's what I they, like. You're really good at that. You that's see? what I like. It's, it's, hearkening, it's hearkening to that. Yeah, yeah. Kind of what you were doing right there. That thing. Which is cool, right? But it's not what we're doing. Watch. Yeah. Yeah. You've got. You like to. You like to go out to the side. We're not doing that. Okay. So just like when we play a double, we don't throw our fingers open and catch it or whatever you were doing. When we do this, similarly, we we when we're going to throw for three. You see, we, we don't do that. We have a three finger grip. And right, we make an honest to goodness throw to start with. We start with an honest to goodness. Three finger grip throw. Look how flat I land, OK? That's my floor right here. Are you gonna, we're going to do this part of the throw. One. See, it does this. No, no. It does 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 this, doesn't it? Three finger grip. What happened? Why is your beat coming away from the surface? It's not coming away from the surface. Yeah, at all. There you go. But why is your elbow so tight? Doesn't it just go move, move something like this? Look, just copy me. Three finger grip. Come on, going up and down and down. Oops, smoothly, smoothly. I, I'm not up like this. You want to do this. No, it's it's more flat than that. It just looks like watch. It looks more like this. 
like that. See? Yeah, here, put your hand, put your other hand, Joe, put your other hand just above. Yeah, it's just gonna it's just be it. So first find the floor. Three finger grip. Just a tiny bit higher with your left hand. Okay, now go ahead and touch that and leave the bead in one place. That's all. Oh, you push your hand up. See, you really want to come up. Go on, touch it. A little better. A little, just a little higher now. Come back down. Not with your other hand. Your other hand has to say it's it's your yeah. it's your stop. We're doing this and see how my see how my elbow swivels when I do that. Yours doesn't. I don't know why. I don't know why either. Let's see. Come OK, now hold hold the uh, bead with the other hand. Mm -hmm. Meditate on that feeling. We're just right in here. And now I'm going to. Bend. I'm bending. And if I bend all the way up to here, look where my elbow is and look where yours is. Mine's poking out now. Mine's poking out. Look. Stay with me. Come on, all the way. Up. Oh, finally. Here it is. You remember this plateau? Yeah. OK, come on back down. Oh. There. There. Your arm works fine. It's just, it's a, it's just whatever's going on. Because if it can go all, see, it came down, it threw up, traveling throughout the different parameters of what is some kind of circular scribe? Isn't that Jim Blackley? Yeah. So, okay, so we're we're going up like this. No, see, it doesn't stay like this because it won't ever go like this. It goes like this. There you go, or like that. Come on down. Come on, this is smooth. Now we're only going to go up half that height. Come on, see your elbow's not out. Why? Go on up further. Go up further, further. Just stay with me. No, it's not out. It's not out enough. No, your elbow. Your if you had a, a drop of water on your on your elbow, <laughs> it would fall straight down. M mine. Ah, not my me. Dick Wilson. Okay, I'll give I'll give you this. Dick Wilson used to talk about a little, uh, was it a two pound weight or a six pound weight? Oh God, a little six pound weight that's attached to your elbow hanging there from a, with a chain, okay? And you're gonna go up. See, by now that chain would have gone from here to hanging from here. Not you, by the time you're up to here, your chain is hanging from here. Not from here. That's better. Good. Now from there, go on all the way up. It should just smoothly go up all the way. There. That's more like it. Come on down half the amount, not all the way. See where your elbow is? Stop, stop, stop. No more. No, no, no. Come on, go back up a little more. There it is. See when you're at that height, just at the, just above the bottom, almost where the R for the first. Right, left, right, right starts. See, it's just up about there, and look where your elbow is. Yeah. See, that's where it should be, more like that. Now come down, and it should be, now your arm should be at the bottom of the L. Right, L, yeah. L. Okay, now go back up to the same height so that you're there. There you go. There it is. Now from here, we're Go to turn. See, that's more like a Murray Spivak, uh, uh, Richard Wilson's kind of throw. Just stay with me. Don't, don't leave me. 
we've come up, right? Come up. And now we're going to turn. Yeah, pretty good. Do that again. Don't go leading with your with your elbow. Okay, it's okay if you want to mimic it a little bit. It'll help you find it. See? See how it all swivels back in just beautifully right in the center. Now go up half that much and see if the arm can come out half that much. Uh, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. That would be, do you have a three finger grip? Come on, make sure the, my bad. Do that again. Remember the height of turn. Do it again. Just to there and come on up. No, 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 no. Your other throw was really good. This one was, now that we've, look, your mind, you seem, this works well for you. Maybe this is a good way to teach this. Your, your mind really finally got the idea that, look, it's, the arm follows that if it comes up half that much, if it comes up to the R, then this height should indicate a certain amount of elbow movement, okay? And then you turned and came back down to the floor. You see, now the amount that you turned up to the ceiling was proportionate to how high you came here up to begin with. So remind yourself, come up to this height. Come on, come up to this height. Okay, and it's gonna get that much turn to give you time to get all the way back down flat to the floor. Come on down, Be nice and flat at the floor. Now, if we're only gonna come up, stay with me, if we're only gonna come up half that much, come up half that much, that's how much the elbow would move. Now, we, all, we, we don't wanna turn this, you turned as high as you did for coming up much higher. Now we're gonna turn relative because we need to give, stay with me, we're, we need to give the arm time to get back flat to the floor. So everything lands, there it is, flat to the floor. You don't have to come up that high, there. Yes. That, that is very different than this, Joe. Stay with me though, I don't want you to play yet. So you got this, so, you, so this. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little. See, you can do it this way. Not how we do it in this technique. Works, we do it that way. I think we're moving less. And, and we're not pulling for every note. We're feeling the stick more forward in the hand because of the three finger grip. And we have this motion. It is very particular. And we're going to make a throw. It's going to be somewhere maybe in between those two throws. Watch, it's, I know you, I can feel you wanting to jump ahead, which is, I totally get it. We just have to calmly, just slowly move forward so that there is a continuity of thought. Okay, so we came up this high and you realize, oh, my elbow does come out. It doesn't look like this. What? It doesn't look like this, it looks like this. Everything's hanging like that. And you came up a certain amount. Then I kind of want you to play though, not bad though. Just see what I mean? Just stay with me for a sec. Don't, don't play for a sec. Then you came up half that amount. And you went like this. I guess you could do, but that's not what I'm trying to get across here. We have the floor, and we're gonna come up half that amount, and we're not gonna turn as high to the ceiling. There's a timing to it. That was what Dick Wilson would say, yeah, you just need to learn the timing of the throw. Vinny called it the one inch death punch. This is not the one inch death punch. I'm pretty sure. I don't think so. It, it, it's not. It's not. There isn't the same kind of precision of alignment and efficiency of motion. OK. I believe. Now we're going to go somewhere in between the first one. And the second one, somewhere in about maybe here. So we can throw for three. Oh, 
okay, but you're you're not feeling it in the uh, three finger grip. I saw I saw your back fingers do this. Do mine? Do mine do that? Hold on, I'm looking. Yeah, see, 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 my fingers are, they're barely moving. They're, can you see that? Here. This pad is the reason I don't, the reason I don't use this pad, typically, is because it's, it's lost its rebound. So it's not a fair one-to-one, -one, but it'll work. If there's a rebound, there's somewhere. Gotta be at least three rebounds here. So I'm doing this, right? Remember, there's this thing that I showed you, and the elbow reacts a certain amount. Stay with me. Just stay with me, right? And then, so once we get to here, we're going to. We know what a throw feels like. And now. It, it feels like it's just doing this. It's not going. It's going. Look, look how little my fingers move. Here's just turning for three, right? Remember, we're playing for two. Can you see how little they move? Yeah. Whatever they, they do, they do. I, my suggestion is to just really make a three finger grip right now, not get into the minutia of, well, this is, see, that's what I did. Well, you do this, and so the hand must be opening, and then I started exaggerating things. Just play with a three-finger grip and make these simple motions. So your throw wasn't happening, right? Not for even one note. You didn't know how high to come up. You, didn't, you had your elbow all crunched. You didn't have a throw. Not really. Now you're, you're honing in on the throw. There, there. Now make a, make a throw. Let everything come back nice and flat and let it bounce over your three finger grip. Better. You don't need to do all this stuff with your hand. It's extra motion. It's not efficient. Do it again. Oh, come on now. That, no, you went back to your old song and dance. Come on, don't lead with the elbow. Just, just. Remember, there's six point in the universe. That's pretty good. See, how does it feel? Feel everything kind of dangling there? The yeah. weight of your elbow? Think of the, 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 the six pound weight hanging from a chain on your elbow. It's just hanging there waiting to sw all the weight of it. You don't need to pull it in. The weight's going to pull it in as you turn and get flat and let it bounce three times over the narrow fulcrum. You know, you threw your fingers open. Stop. Stop. Throw was pretty good though. Oh, so close. So just do this again. Watch. Make sure you have your floor. Come on up and make one note. Three finger grip. Has to be the potential. Do it again. Don't wait at the top. Come on up. You know why we're coming up. It's just this. Do it again. Nice. Three finger grip. Feel it in there when it lands. Do it again. Cool. Now, this time, just let it dribble on the surface. You don't have to do anything. Why'd you open your hand? You don't have to change your grip at all. It's just you're stopping down further. You didn't change anything, did you? Go with me. Play one note again. Now, it's going to feel like that, only you're going to be closer to the surface. I'm letting it dribble. Just do that. Don't change anything. There. It doesn't change anything, really. Not very much. You don't need to throw your fingers open. It's more about where you stop when you decide to come back up. So your rebounds are finished. You don't have to do all this stuff you thought you had to do. You really don't. Okay. So this time, let it dribble again to remind yourself of what that feels like. And don't change your grip. Three fingers. Don't wait at the top. You can remedially, but I just want you to feel a nice natural wrist turn. 
There, okay. Now this time, just give me the first three of them. Oh, you got four. Nice and easy without doing a darn thing. You got too many. Don't change your grip. Just turn your wrist and decide that you only want three of that dribble. You don't have to wait up at the top. You don't have to do a big dramatic thing to finish. Just three, three, that's all it is. Do it again. Oh, you're coming up higher now, you know, thinking you need all that momentum. You don't. There you go. You don't need all that momentum. You've got a beautiful narrow fulcrum. Now this time all I want you to do is make a throw and do that size wrist turn. Come on up to the place somewhere in between. There you go. Now just almost. Oh no, no, it doesn't go up all twisty. It goes straight up and there's a little six pound weight. There you go. Now make that nice little throw and let it bounce just like you did when you didn't make a throw. No, twist it and threw your fingers open. Just remind yourself of what it feels like to just turn and play three. Do it again. Don't go throwing. Straight up, not out to the side. That's your hang up. Straight up. No, not all twisty. Just smoothly. This construct goes straight up. Yeah, there you go. Now come back down. Don't even play because you're not getting the motion. You lost the motion. Come up again. Nice and flat with your hand flat. Not to do a twisting or doing anything. Mm -hmm. You don't feel much, do you? <laughs> go on, come back down, don't play. Come up just a little less. Remember, you keep it flat, just like that. There you go. Now just make a gentle little turn with a three finger grip and let it bounce. Let the whole thing collapse. Not bad, you really came down pretty slow. It's good though. No, 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 go up like you did. Get the up part. Now just do a little wrist turn like you just did as though your hand was already at the ground. Better. Okay, now can you put that into practical? Can you, can you say exercise number nine? I'll get there, this simple, seemingly simple thing. Uh, but it's not, and it never will be really. Yes, it will be. It, yes, it will be very simple. I hope so. It really is pretty simple. I uh, hope I can get this. Okay, well, I'm adding. It's conceptual. The whole thing is, I find that this method is it's conceptual and it really involves mastering a series of simple strokes which enable seven basic strokes that enable you to play all the rudiments however to master these these seven basic strokes requires a lot of work and and, and focus and diligence and, and very thorough practice day to day. It's not like you just, it's not like you got, oh, I've got it. And, and then you don't have to drill it anymore or really understand how it works. It, it's, it's on unlearning a lot of other stuff perhaps that I've learned or, yeah, it just takes, it takes time. Good. See, that's a nice, that relaxed kind of, uh, kind of a settled sort of mindset. Yeah. It helps everything go faster. Well, right? yeah, and, and and you can have fun while you're doing it. Exactly. I, I, I find learning the technique demanding in that sense because it's not just a matter of there's, there's a lot of detail in this. There's a lot of subtlety in, in, in terms of getting the motions, the physical motions smooth and efficient. Well, that's, that's what we're going to do. I don't want to lose what you just felt. I want you to put this into practice now. Number nine, metronome at 72. Can you make those throws in the right and let it rebound over in our folks and not go into your old routine? I know it's going to be hard to, because you have to, you're creating a new engram. Right? Yeah. Don't turn too high to the ceiling. Just come up just what you need. There you go. And just keep your three fingers. Don't change your grip. It'll work. You just straight up, straight up. It's your, it's your up. No, you're right back to your old thing. You're doing your old thing. I don't know. I, I just, I just, hey, I got to know what to do. I know what to do. What? What? Oh, no, it's not it. 
So remember, we have this. We have this and this. We have just a regular throw, and we know it's going to be three notes. That's all it is. Oh, don't play for a minute. See how nice and settled that is, see? That's not this. That's some other technique, very different. So how are we gonna fix that? We're just gonna spend another minute on it. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna play it. You're at 72. So it's, you're gonna play at half the speed. So now it's like, like the metronome is a quarter note, not a half note. You're not really, not now, really. you're, now you're actually playing eighth notes. So we're going. So can you do this? Can you do this? It, look, this is all it is. Watch. Now it's on the wrist. Better, better. There you go. Now put the other hand in. See, more like that. Watch your up now. Watch all the pieces. No, your very last one. You did this. The old twist, oh, twist on me. You're going into your old arsenal. You know? that is. Come on. How high are you going to come up on your T-shirt? All right, and it's going to be flat when you get to the top. Is your hand going to look like this? Or going to look like this? Come on. Come up a little less. Come on, don't get all twisty. Just straight up. There, it's better. There you go. There you go. That's how you need to practice this. Right now. Do, do that in the other hand. Do that in the other hand now. At the same speed, that, that's working. I want you to be at the floor when you're, when you're turning. I want you to be at the floor. I hear, look how, look how flat it is. There's like no, there's plenty of time. You don't even need a nut motion. See, it blends into another stroke. Like you could never play the flam tap right now because you're just getting this. But as soon as you get this, other strokes will immediately become available. Okay? So you're going to need to take the time now to meditate on the cross lateral transference of what you've really got in your right to your left. I just did it and I don't play the script. But where you, where you come up, don't play for a sec. This is just, this is the conceptual part. Because you've proven that you get it, right? Now, can you internalize it so that it's always available for you? You want to get this part, and it's got to stay nice and flat, right or left. It's going to come up to a certain height. The elbow is going to move, just leave it alone, but don't go holding it in, right? 
And shouldn't you be shouldn't you be aimed down when you're up here now? See, it would go from here. Watch, it would go from here. You might find the floor. Come on up in your left. You're gonna play in position. Three finger grip. There it is, right? Three finger grip. Cut, cut in. Keep these together. Come on, you're holding a marble. You're holding a marble. Okay, okay, right? Everything's nice and relaxed. And and if you go up, you go up like that, would you? Just keep this three finger grip and just change the angle of this. Not too bad. So if your elbow looks nice and relaxed, and and then you're going to make that little wrist turn with the three finger grip. That was pretty good. See how flat it looks. One more time. That was it. Okay, so we're maintaining the three. We don't have to. We're not going to throw our fingers open or do. Yeah, if we weren't holding anything, maybe maybe the hand would open. I'm asking you right now, remedios. This is really more of what it feels like to hold on to the stick. There's no stick, so it's going to feel like you're holding a marble. Okay. Yeah, you're holding a little marble, and you're just going to get this angle to you. Not bad. And then you're going to make a little flick, not too slow. Boom! Okay, that was 54.49. You've had a bunch of successful uh, uh, markers, timestamps throughout this lesson, okay? But what you're getting now is the fine tuning of the body, the fine tuning of the mind so that there's a synchronicity between the two. And then the fine, it's like you hired a tuner to come in, the fine tuning of the instrument, because now you're not clutching it, trying to pull. Now it can ring. So you've tuned the sticks. All right, I'm going to turn this off. Pull back.